All right, thank you. Follow this meeting from the Boston Regional School Committee to order. Please uh, rise with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Any public comments? I don't see any. All right, anybody have any communications? Big week. Big week. No week. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Go down. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, please? So moved. Julie? Second. Megan? All in favor, are any discussion? All right, all in favor of the consent agenda? Aye. Aye. All right, and then against? Nothing. So the motion passes, great. Uh, chair's report, I don't really have much other than to say a uh, big thank you to all the voters um, for coming out to the town meetings Monday night, that was great. Uh, I said enough, uh, I went through a long story. Uh, thank you on social media, but I think um, the committee probably owes a special thanks to Jackie Offsis and Kyle Burns, the presidents of the PTOs in the towns, uh, for getting all the parents together involved and hopefully uh, we stay that way. Um, I already talked to them. I'm sure they'll be more involved as we go in the next few months and into next year. So that's good stuff. But I think um, based on the way the votes went, the numbers of people voting, I think people are pretty excited and, and uh, ready to support the schools. So I think that was a good thing. Thanks to the town staff checking in, all those people. <laughs> yeah, it took a little while there in Boston to get going, huh? A lot of people. Online, yeah. yeah. How many total voters do you have? They said the auditorium. The auditorium, the auditorium they thought, they estimated about 400 people in the auditorium. But, um, I mean, it was full. There was like three, she told us, 300 something registered voters that came in. I don't know exactly how many were in Berlin. I know one of the votes that I saw had 201 votes cast. That wasn't the school vote. Uh, the school votes were 180, mm -hmm. about 202 probably. Um, but uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, okay, uh, Caroline is not here tonight. She couldn't make it. That's absolutely fine. No problem. Uh, subcommittee reports. I don't know if we have any subcommittee reports. Megan, no. Uh, nothing from success uh, policy. We don't have a report to make. Uh, Lori's not here, but we are going to be taking a look at, I brought them with me, a couple of uh, fundraising and cash donation policies that we have, and I'll speak more of that during the votes. Um, all right, so that brings us to Carol. Yeah, I just had a couple of things. Um, if you take a look at my report, that there's a request. Uh, Daniel Joseph, who's working with us on the portrait of the graduate work, is coming in to the school to do observations in mid-May. He, in addition to going to the classrooms, he's going. To, he wants to meet with focus groups. So he'll meet with student focus group, um, staff focus groups, and parent focus groups. So we were talking about the possibility of asking the school committee members to it's a, like a group, put together a group of five of individuals that you think might be willing to sit with him for about a half hour, 45 minutes, and kind of give your thoughts around what, whatever I think is what the school needs, where you feel the culture of the school is. But I feel like all of you have a pulse on that more than I do. So if you want to let me know, I put by May 12th, Friday May 12th, so that's next week. If you could just give me an idea, um, and I put the times in there too, so you would know what time you think, what time to come over to the school to me, and and we can catch up if you have any questions. Just just touch base with me. Um, so that that I wanted to take care of. Also, just a reminder about the retreat in July with Tony Bent. He's going to be contacting you when first week of June. Just to get to know each of you, we want to do like a Zoom call and he'll set up the time. The reason I can work on that together um, with, him, with you to set up the time which is best for you to talk with him. Just so when he comes in, he has a sense already of the of the body and the work that we do. So that's taken care of. And the, the other piece, of, just quickly, Nancy Philgate from the Boston Historical Society called me this afternoon. So excited. I just I, I just want to share this with you before we go on. 
she so she I said send me an email. It's lengthy, but I'll just give you the, the gist of it. Exciting news: a new publication, Boylston Civil War Veterans, a book that includes well documented initial research by Tahanto students, has been published by Boylston Historical Collaborative. Um, that's the Boylston Historical Commission, the Historical Society, and the Boylston Public Library through the support of the Boylston Cultural Council. It started out um, as a conversation that Nancy and I had several years ago, just with my other role, and it was around getting students from Tahanto more involved with the community. The students did research on Civil War veterans that were part of the town, their history, and I kind of brought them back to life again and gave them sort of that honor of who they were and what they fought for. And so they did a presentation um, on Zoom that spring after they had done their work. Um, it was well received by the community. Anyway, they took that information and now they published this book. So she's going to get me a copy. Well, I asked her, she said she's going to give one. She named all the students involved. She's going to um, have to bring a copy over to me. I thought that that was so exciting to, to see that effort with the community and the school. So. Is that something that's going to be uh, like publishing for sale? Yes. Are the current are the students still in school? No, they were already graduated. They were actually uh, last year's graduates. I think a number of them she named. And that's pretty cool. I don't know if any of them are around and want to come in and talk about it. And they can come the 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 book or something. because they'll be back from college. That's what she wants a way to give them their give them yeah. their books and. So we got and ask. So I know I a number of them. I can <laughs> ask them if they'd like to come in. So okay, I'd be yeah, happy to do that. So I just great idea. another up, no positive note that we know about. Just came in today. So. Great, that's the. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, the Aspen Valley. That's just a report that they send in three or four times a year. I'm getting used to learning about how they operate. That's it's just a document for you that I think you typically vote to approve it. Yeah. We don't do anything with it. It's part of the board. Okay. <clears throat> cool. All right. Well, thank you, Carol. Uh, Nancy, do you have anything to say on the budget? Um, I just wanted to co cover some stuff that you guys will be voting on. Okay. If that's okay to go through them really quick. Yep. Um, the first one is the collaborative oil bid. So Berlin Boylston is one of several area school districts that we participate in a collaborative procurement for heating. We do this through the French River Education Center. By participating in this procurement as a group, instead of individually, districts can aggregate their volume and secure more advantageous pricing than each district can do on its own. So this year we've had several bids. We um, kept repeating it and declining them because we were hoping for a better outcome, especially because the market was fluctuating so much this year. We finally received a bid that we were looking for um, and we're happy with and it was awarded on March 30th, 2023 to Dennis Kaper for $3.04 per gallon. This cost increase is well in line with what we estimated and factored into our fiscal year 24 budget. Last year's price was $2.90. Um, so with the way that the market has been fluctuating, I'm really pleased with this price. So we're, we will be asking the committee for acceptance of this oil bid. Um, I also have the excess and deficiency certification. So the Mass Department of Revenue Division of Local Services certified our district's excess and deficiency balance as of June 30th, 2022. The amount is for $369,571. This is a small decrease from last year by $12,722. This is just due to how miscellaneous receivables were applied to the operating budget. Um, you can find the official communication from the Department of Revenue um, in the school committee's drive. So I'm asking uh, the committee for acceptance of this certification. There's two grants that we have received. They're both through Maya. There's a risk management grant and a wellness grant. Maya is a Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Association. It's a nonprofit organization serving its membership consisting of municipalities and regional school districts. 
and we uh, use, also use them to procure our health care benefits and insurance offerings. So annually they offer these grants to their members and we apply for them. So the risk management grant is intended to reduce the risk of a claim for the insurance carrier. So we applied for this, we received $6,000 that's being applied towards the Boylston Elementary School facility assessment. The wellness grant is also offered annually. It's provided to its members with resources for creating and maintaining great places to work. Members are encouraged to invest in projects or in equipment that promote a good workforce and a healthy work culture. This year we received $10,000 and we are using it in the district offices. We updated the kitchen area with a new refrigerator, coffee maker, and a new toaster oven. Everyone in the district received new office chairs that are um, good for your posture. They're like really nice and line up, ergonomic office chairs. Thank you. Um, we, we also purchased new visitor chairs for the entryway and some additional visitor chairs for people's offices who didn't have chairs for people to come in. Um, and we're ordering new pictures for our walls and also some tables. So we're very excited. We're making them look really pretty in the district office. That's good. So we'll be, we're asking for acceptance for both of these grants. Um, we also received our donation from NPB, I guess it's the third Boylston LLC for 35,000. Um, the donation letter is in your drive and it states that the funds are to be used by the Berlin Boylston School District for the facility assessment of Boylston Elementary Schools. The donation letter states that it may be expended under the direction of the school superintendent with approval by the Board of Selectmen of Boylston. The Board of Selectmen did accept this donation for 35,000 for this facility assessment at BES to be expended under the direction of the superintendent on their meeting on January 17, 2023. So now we just need the school committee to approve it and we are good to go. And two more, well, one more is we received a grant from the Department of Education. It's a Nutrition Equipment Assistant Grant. Um, these, it was $4,039. And these funds were applied towards a heating mobile cabinet for our Berlin Memorial School. And lastly, in the drive, you will find the fiscal year 22 audited financial statements. These are a standard review um, that need your approval yearly, and they're in your drive for your review. And those are my updates. I don't have a budget update at this time, except for our fiscal year 24 budgets approved. It, yeah, it passed on Monday night, <laughs> yeah. so we're, we're on, to next, on, yep. on to other things. So, all right. Thanks, Nancy. You're uh, That brings us to business items pretty quick. Uh, so, uh, Julie, is there anything on the scholarship award, Marion Hoffman, or is it are we too early for that? So? Um, we're a tad too early for it. So, right. just has to prove. Uh, I checked with the um, treasurer from Berlin. The money's in there. The teachers have to award it. But... So, we'll do that in June? Yeah, we'll do right. in June. That's perfectly fine. So, A will move to June. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the school committee calendar. Can I have a motion to approve the school committee calendar for the school year 2023 to 24? Uh, actually, no, this is a first read. First read. Yeah, Sorry. Read. Yep. First read. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Have you looked at that? Mm -hmm. You have looked at it or you have? I've looked at it. I don't have any questions. All right. It's always so hard. Fine. Yeah, it's tough yeah. to. So we're just starting from earlier. Yeah, the only thing that's different uh, is still second Tuesdays. Most months, I think, uh, you know, when it gets to this time of year with the town meetings and things, it's kind of we do the best we can to schedule, but on the fly, it might need yeah. to change. Uh, the time is moved earlier. I think it's the time is at five o'clock right now, but that's not set in stone. The committee can discuss and figure out whatever the committee wants to do. Uh, I think five o'clock is good with administration, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. What's it? The official work day was that ended like three, four. Hmm. Right. I was it ever <laughs> No, you, yes, you work. You work later. Really business hours, I guess. Yeah. Eight to four, but eight to four. Right. So hanging around till six thirty is 
tougher than hanging around till five. Yeah, well, mostly for the principals and then and, yeah. Um, yeah, five principals. would be great just because we get here so early and very yeah. 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 And then my, my only hesitation, <laughs> aside from my own, but it's like if someone's going to come to a meeting for a public comment, yeah. like people get out of work at five, so I would hesitate to be right at five, maybe five thirty would allow more leeway for people to get here. But I just, you know, um, to participate and watch. And, Okay. So that's up the first read. So you've got it there, the drive. Mm -hmm. Take a think about it, and we'll put it off for a vote in June. Yeah, and that's also really hard for people that help coach and tell me to. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that could be on those weeks. Yeah, I think it's, it's you know, school committee, is, it's one night a month. Yeah, except for these last seven. This has been a, this has been a, <laughs> since November, this has been a different, <laughs> unique year. Yes, yeah. Yeah. But yes, usually yeah. once February, we know this too. Right. May with the town meeting, who knows otherwise. Mm -hmm. Usually. And plus two coaches, usually. I mean, I know when I coach, I pick around. Yeah. So this work around. Just that's why that's, yeah. I would say to make it easier for the principals. Staff. Another reason we schedule the whole year. At the yeah. Same time, you know? yeah. I mean, I would do four, but like I, I <laughs> do hear what you're saying, Jack. I just feel bad. Like the principal's school is out at three. Right. So like, if, if we have a principal that lives an hour away, they're not going home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then right. it's it's just and you know like for our staff that it's a long day. We have a lot. Yeah. You know, but I, I think five is a good compromise um, because I think if you do want to make a public comment. You've got to plan ahead and I don't know. I mean I think five fifteen might might be a better compromise just to allow people to leave work and actually exit out the door. I don't know. Maybe we could move public comment on the agenda. Do we have to do it first? No, we don't have to. So we can always have it on the agenda. Maybe we could have it on the agenda for like the five thirty thing, do it after the reports or something like that. That's an option. That's a great idea. Sure. So I'm I mean I'm just saying that way we can because then we're out of here, like everyone could go home and have dinner. Yeah. I'm a big proponent for meals at their appropriate times. <laughs> Sorry. That's good. I know. What's that? Peanut butter pretzels all the way here. Moving public comment to later, like between the reports and the business items, mm -hmm. might be a decent thing to do just because uh, mm -hmm. we and usually discuss what's going to be voted on before. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we get reports like Nancy just gave me. That, yeah, I can see that working. Sure. Yeah. All right. And game. I mean, the reports are really just for us usually updates you know if yeah. somebody wants to listen they can live stream in yeah. but i mean like when there's right a vote coming like nancy just gave us yep. information about a few votes that are coming if someone wants to make a comment before we vote because we don't yep. truly discuss it until we've got the motion so we make the motion so we can do it just like right before we do the votes all right um yeah so think about that we'll have a big discussion next yeah. month uh okay. the policy subcommittee that uh, the policy there the grievance process so this one, Lori's not here. Lori has okay. all the information on this. Would you guys have questions for Lori? Do you want to hold this one? Do you want to vote on it now? What do you want to do? Oh, the yeah, and it's the grievance process. Yeah. It's up. You know what? It's, a, it's the third time we're seeing it. Yeah. 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 The grievance, the document, that's new with people's name on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, my biggest thing is two different people to complain to. That's there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, that's not, yes. So I'm just you want to take the vote, you think? Yeah. All right. May I, I could. Are you good with it, Jess? I've already read that other document two times. All right. So let's let's do it. Then. We have a motion to approve the uh, policy AC non discrimination policy, including harassment, retaliation, grievance process for Title IX complaints. So moved. Jess? Second. Sorry. Julie? All right. Let's talk about it. Uh, anybody have any discussion? I think it's thoughtfully done. It's really specific. All right. It's nicely done. Any others? Jess, do you want to say anything? No, I mean, I'm just happy to see that, you know, two people in the case of conflicting interests. Yeah. All right, then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. All right. Against? All right. Motion passes. Um, may I have a motion to approve the seventh grade out of state field trip 
and does it triple the application of OER? Do you want me to read? I have something from them. Would you like me to read it? Yeah. Um, so the seventh grade team um, has an out-of-state field trip to Roger Williams Park Zoo. They like to go on June 2nd. They will use their content knowledge of ecology to complete a scavenger hunt consisting of questions on specific exhibits, riddles, and a collection of photos they must take. They really love this part of the trip, and they will also get some free time to visit the animals in their small groups with a chaperone. They chose this zoo because most students have not frequented it. Um, and they plan to be back by two o'clock for a regular bus and parent pickup. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions for Sally on that? So we just have to vote because they're technically it's leading the state, state, yeah. state, even though it's probably closer than. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I was just thinking that. Uh, all right. I only had one question, but I think it's going to align with our conversation later, just about money being used for field trips. And I did see on the form that it was coming from student activity or student funds, um, how, I mean, I guess it's a greater conversation that money is not earmarked necessarily for field trips. So is, the, is it the particular classes, money, the class of? That's what I just saw. I saw 2028. The class of 2028 and student funded. So they must be charging. There's a fee. Yes. $25 a student. No, there's that, and I think it says the student funds, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's both. Yeah, it's both. That's what I'm saying. Like, and it's a bigger conversation. Like, if they have a act student activity account and they, the teacher wants to have a field trip. Well, the, doesn't the student, doesn't the class have like officers that decide what to do with their uh, that money? Uh, not at that age level. No. Uh, upper levels, they do, yeah. right? Yeah. Upper levels, yeah. not in middle school. Where does the funds come from? Because like uh, upper grades is feel uh, like um, yeah. raising fundraising. Yeah, right exactly. Yeah. So you so the elementary age kids that raise money K to five, it will stay in their class accounts the whole way through, and then when they leave fifth, it comes up to Tahanda mm -hmm. right down, yeah. and then it goes into that class account. But someone's there, like there's an advisor or somebody there. Is it the teachers, principals? Decide what the money goes to. Well, we have we have a treasurer for the schools. So. Yeah. All right. Does that answer the question? It, no, I think it's a bigger conversation. Like, so seventh grade gets money taken out because they go on this awesome field trip. Let's say the sixth grade. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, should the student activity account money should that all be outlined where? Should, so year over year, if they have a field trip each year, should that money come from student activities or should that student activities fund like the prom, graduation? <coughs> student, student, that's what student activities is for, right? Field trips. activities is for field trips. Okay. And, and it, for activities, anything okay. that the students do outside of the curriculum aspect. Yeah, so, but isn't our field trips curriculum? Well, I guess it, it, so. Yeah, I think it's a bigger determined by the principal and the superintendent. Yeah. Okay. Whether which bucket it falls into. Yeah. But I can. We don't. We. I can tell you in next year's budget because I'm familiar with it. We didn't. We didn't budget for field trips. Right. Okay. I know. And I honestly, in all the schools I've been at, I have never seen field trips be funded from the general budget. It's right. always funded from student activities. Okay. So like you said, the money follows them each year yeah. and through funding raising, and I don't know if they pay class fees, this, they're pretty young. They will in high school. They, yeah, so, they, so that's early. So that's usually what pays for it. Or the class advisor kind of just, you know, figures it out how much each family owes. Okay. I don't know how much they have into the account at this particular time. And then if they receive donations that are to be earmarked, that's when they go over to the business office to yeah. be held. Yeah. So then they won't be used mistakenly right. on something that they're really. Yeah. Okay. Does that help a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very familiar with it now because I need to class for yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 All right, may I have a motion to approve the seventh grade out of state field trip? So moved. May. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Nothing. The motion passes. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion to appoint Joseph Michael back? I hope I said that name correctly. As the BBRC district treasurer for 2023 24. 
So moved. Julie? Second. Megan? Any discussion? Just for Jess and Lisa, he's been doing it for like 10 years. Yeah, I had to say so. Um, more, more, maybe more. Um, he's, he's lovely. Um, he does it for another district, so he's experienced. I believe he's retired from, he was some type of accountant or finance, or he had some type of job applicable to being a treasurer, but I don't believe it's a full-time thing, right? It's a part-time thing. He oh, comes he and writes the checks. Every other week, or yeah. he signs the checks, and he reviews all the everything that's done. So that's his position now, then? Or yeah. Is that, yeah. Oh, okay. He's yeah. been so doing it for years. We're like reappointing him. We're yeah. reappo we have to reappoint him every year. So. Yeah. yeah. And he doesn't usually come to the meetings. I know uh, I had never met him, and I signed the warrants, and finally, the last time I was there, he just happened to be there. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to meet him, and he was great. So, yeah. And very experienced. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? All right, the motion passes. Uh, now I have a motion to uh, approve the excess and deficiency. So moved. Megan? Yes, yeah, second. Julie, this is what Nancy just talked yeah, to us yeah, about. Yeah, this is the. Yeah. Any additional questions for Nancy? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Okay, the motion passes. I uh, may have a motion to approve the uh, oil bid at $3.442 per gallon from Dennis K. Burr. So moved. Julie? Second. Jess? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion passes. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the MIAA wellness grant for ten thousand dollars? So, Julie, second. Megan, uh, any discussion on this? And these are grants. Who applied for the grants? Is that Nancy? Yeah, you did. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, three times. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, which five times? <laughs> uh, all right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. All right, motion passes. Um, may I have a motion to approve the NIA risk grant for ten thousand dollars. So I'm okay. Can we change that to six? It's six. All right, All right. sorry. Yep. May I have a motion to approve the MIA risk grant for six thousand dollars? So moved. Thank you, sir. Megan, Julie, any discussion on that? Um, oh, sorry. No discussion. No. no. All right. Okay. You can if you want. No. It's okay. It's allowed. No, I'm nothing. Go ahead and talk about it. All right. I was about um, to say hi. Okay. <laughs> all right. All, all, all in favor. Here's your chance. All in favor. Aye. All right. You guess? All right. Motion passes. Uh, now, a uh, motion to approve the acceptance of the Nutrition Equipment Assistance Grant for $4,039. So moved. Megan? Second. Jess? Any discussion on this one? I have one thing. That's yes. specific just to the kitchen and food service. That's correct. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? All right. Motion passes. Um, before we get into, so the next two are cash donations, right? Not grants, they're actual donations. Um, so I've got I've got our fundraising in cash, uh, all public gifts to the schools KCD policy. So I remember going through these policies and updating them last year or the year before with uh, Bob and uh, Susan. I believe was the one that we're here with. Uh, the KCD public gifts to the schools was uh, last approved and updated in 2018. I do remember looking at it. We thought it was fine at the time. Um, this one says, uh, the superintendent has authority to accept all gifts of offers. Uh, in the case of gifts from industry, business, or special interest groups, no extensive advertising promotion can be involved. 
uh, with the donation gifts that were involved, involved changes to school sites, requires school print approval, and it says, uh, it does say gifts will automatically become property of the school system. Any gift of cash, which is what we're involved with here, uh, whether or not intended by the donor for a specific purpose, will be accepted by both of the school committee, handled as a separate account, and expended at the discretion of the committee as provided by law. So we need to look at this. I'm going to take this to the policy subcommittee uh, with Lori, hopefully next week. And we do need to update it because there was, I don't know if you guys are familiar, there was an issue recently with a cash donation from 2020, I believe, right before COVID happened, where uh, the fundraising was done for Nature's Classroom. Uh, then a local business in Boylston agreed to match some funds, donated to it very generously. Uh, then Nature's Classroom was canceled because of COVID, killing everything, shutting everything down. Um, that trip didn't happen. Then, what was it, about a year later, October of the following year, the organizer of the fundraiser came to school committee, said, we've got this money, we want to donate it. And apparently that was done for the specific class. I think it was a 27, class of 2027, I believe. So when they made the donation to the school committee, it was specifically done for the class of 2027. I don't really remember it, but the minutes are there. It was approved and accepted. So it's with the class. There was an issue. One of the donors from a business in Boylston was something happened. Someone had a question. That question was confirmed that the money's with the class, but that still led someone to have some misunderstanding that it was not going to stay with the class. The person asked for the three year old donation money back. That's, you know, not really a, a good thing. Uh, so I think we need to strengthen the language of this policy, is what I'm trying to say. And so in, you know, in finance, banking, all these different industries, you have these procedures and policies. Uh, they call them different things, but basically it's know your client type of checks where you do, where you verify where the money's coming from. Is the person giving the money legally allowed to give that money? How is the money raised? It wasn't from any sort of illicit activity, you know, money laundering type of thing. I don't know that we need to go that far, but we definitely should be probably getting more documentation when we get these cash donations. Mm -hmm. So I just want to let everybody know we are going to take care of that so we don't have people donating for one thing, thinking their money is going to be used for whatever they decided to donate for. Then even though the policy says it, you know, they we're not going to spend that money on something else. It's not like a bait and switch type of situation, right? We're going to honor the donor's wishes. Mm -hmm. So I think we just we need to step up the line. <coughs> so yeah. That's what we're going to so do. So with the CRE donation into the program, like it came with a letter. Yeah. So perhaps it's something we look at, like you know, certain amount. We're going to require, yeah, we're going to require some type of letter from the person. And they, whatever documentation, like if it comes from an individual person, they give a check, they write in the memo, they check what they want the donation for. That's that should cover it, right? But in cases like this, where it comes from a business or it comes from a fundraising effort and they do like a GoFundMe or yeah. something like that, right? Like they're asking people to give money. We should make sure that that money they gave was raised, you know, honestly. And when they turn around and give that money to the schools, make sure that the schools know what the fundraising effort was and that we use it in whatever spirit the fundraiser was done. You know? So like on the GoFundMe, there's, I mean, it's Usually it's said, GoFundMe, right? Exactly, so, that, right? Would be, that would be enough. Yeah, but mm -hmm. we don't have language in the policies that actually cover that. So we're gonna have to add some stuff in there. So that will be coming for you to take a look at and vote on in June. The other thing I wanted to say about the GoFundMes, they're like a really slippery slope because unless they're tied to a not-for-profit organization, when you donate to a GoFundMe, it's actually not tax deductible. It's not considered giving to charity. Yeah. You know, it, there could be a situation. So I, I don't know, you know, the one that the school set up. I don't think the school set it up. No, no, this isn't, this isn't school. This is outside groups. So we actually right. that's the next policy. Yeah, you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful about how money is moved from groups because sometimes if 
people are just giving to a GoFundMe, it doesn't mean you're giving to a charity. So yeah. I don't know if a charity was set up and people were giving to that through GoFundMe. Yeah. That we're probably happen. not going to get that involved in it because it's some right. outside organization. They go do what they do. We're not involved. In well, that. just it'll be at the end. They're then right. making a donation to the schools. That's the point where we need to make sure mm -hmm. they're legally allowed to. You know, we don't want to be getting requests three years later from people saying, "Give me my money back. Yep. I'm not going to work with you again." You know, we're not. That's not mm -hmm. what we want. But the next policy, KCDA, covers community fundraising for school. You can look it up online. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's pretty lengthy, but. Um, so there are certain situations, if the committee has recognized a group, like a PTO group, right? They're gonna go do fundraisers, that's fine. We, we trust the PTO groups, they're gonna do it. But the other groups, like, you know, a nature's classroom, parents get together and they think it's a good idea, let's raise some money. They, someone goes out and says, raise money for BBRSD, class of whatever. People giving money, that sounds to them like the schools are endorsing this fundraiser for whatever reason but they are not. In order for that to happen, those groups technically are supposed to come to the committee to get permission to tell them what they're gonna do about, which Nature's Classroom has done, right? Yeah, yeah. So we have, we do have a policy for that, so and we're gonna look at that one and see if we can kind of match the two up and make sure that there's yeah. solid stuff. And whenever somebody does come to us saying, we wanna fundraise for this event, we can just hand them this and be like, all right, here's the procedure, here's the policy, this is what you gotta to do to make it official. I was just going to add to that. I think also it would be important once this is all approved to keep that documentation together, including yeah. any fundraising letter that went out, the original letter. Mm -hmm. So we all have we have that in place. And that's part of what we need to keep. Yeah, we should have. Uh, you know, I know Lisa's working on cleaning up the drive for us, doing good stuff there. It should be an easy spot to find. Right. Right? One other thing, and we can fit it somehow into the policy as we would write it, is if you have something like a GoFundMe, and it's a party that's not the school yeah. doing the fundraising, say they raise $5,000, but we the school ends up getting three. Mm -hmm. There has to be wording in there that we're not responsible for the difference. Yeah, We're responsible for what's given to us by that party. So mm -hmm. we just have to somehow figure that in there. Yeah, because once that party gives the school the money, that party is giving the school the money, right. not the 50 different donors right. that gave them money. Right. Mm -hmm. So like- You still want that to fall back on us. Yeah, 100 parents get 50 bucks each to Nature's Classroom. Yeah. I'm just picking on you because that's- No, I think it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's relevant. And then they come and give us the equivalent of $25 per parent. Where the other $25 go? Not our business. Not our job to- We're saying, got it, got thank it. you for the $25 per, per kid. We appreciate it. That's what the check is for. If we got to make sure we're legally on, on the ball on this, right? Okay. We yeah. can't be involved. It's like GoFundMe's are tough. I'm yeah. curious, like, like BEF awesome. and PTO, like those are five hundred three. I assume. Yeah. Something yeah. Like yeah. So like if BEF like could be through them, like yeah, but BEF they do, yeah. yeah. It could be, but BEF isn't going to use a GoFundMe because they don't want to pay half in fees. That's why I said yeah. GoFundMe's are very slippery slopes. So I would, but I'm curious, like, because we already have those. You guys already have those set up, so mm -hmm. if. If someone wanted to raise funds, we encourage them to go through the PTO or go through the BEF because you're already set up as a 503 and just have like earmarked those particular funds for that particular. Those program. groups have they have to spend the funds in accordance with their bylaws, I believe. So they're set up in it as a not for profit, and I don't think they can just say, "Oh, we're going to give to Carol and the schools to do whatever they want." Like no, no, like they like have to say like, they just have to use that. So yeah, PTO for funding the classroom. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yes, yeah. for sure. yes. Yeah. they could. You say PTO, can you help do so, yeah. the classroom? Or BEF, yeah. can, can you do? You, yeah, because they BEF does class. grants. They can do computers or whatever. So the first part of the fundraising policy says, um, you know, persons or organizations desiring to conduct fundraising for school programs may do so through fundraising groups officially recognized by the school. Yeah. That will cover BEF, yeah. PTO, yeah. stuff like yeah. that, right? It also, what it does allow for other groups. So it says, or they may seek approval of the school committee in advance of undertaking independent fundraising on behalf of the school board district. So it does cover that, right? But I think it's more the, the part where it's given to the school. Once it's given to the school, then it becomes our responsibility to know what it's to be used for and make sure that it is used that way, right? So we definitely want to keep that in mind. But that brings us back to that doesn't, 
the documentation and information we have for these next two items is in the drive. It should be all set. It looks yeah. okay to me. Yeah. Everything's good. Nancy mentioned this. So could I have a motion to approve the donation from Northbridge CRE for $35,000 for the BES facility assessment, specifically um, for the BES facility assessment? Mm -hmm. Second. Jess, Julie. All right, now any discussion here about the letter? You all saw the letter, Nancy gave us uh, uh, information about it. So the letter says, the letter is actually addressed to the Boylston Town Board, board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, in, in conjunction with the superintendent, can spend the money. Um, I think originally that was the plan. It was going to go to the town. And we were just going to send them the invoice, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but now they're giving it directly to the schools. Yeah. The check is made up. The copy of the check is in there as well, made up to the district. Uh, so that looks all above board to me. Uh, but if anybody has any questions about it. Cool. Can I just the two policies you mentioned? Can you just send this letter to them? Oh, yeah. KCD and KCDA. Um, the K group in there uh, covers all sorts of community relations stuff and finance stuff. So out of the policy uh, folder on the website, which is at bbrsd.org, or the school committee, online policy manual. It's searchable. It's actually very easy to use. Anybody can go check it out. Uh, but yeah, I got it printed there too if you want to take a look at it. Um, all right, so we've got the motion to accept this one. Uh, any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? All right, that motion passes. Now may I have a motion to accept the Nature's Classroom donation in the amount of? $6,391.14. $6,391.14. So moved. Megan? Second. Jess? Anything on this one? This, the documentation we received on this one specifically says it is to remain with the Nature's Classroom trip yeah. for future classes to use if there's money left over after this one. Right? There's yeah. no money left over. Yeah. yeah, there won't be. But, but there might be a donor that comes in last minute. You never know. It might match. Yeah. yeah. So, and if you're listening, we need a little more. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Can you explain why that, that is? I thought people, or is this, what does, what would, what do these funds cover? I thought people pay, is this just a supplement tuition? Yeah, it's basically um, cut the cost of yeah, the kids. Cost. So it's four hundred dollars to go. Okay. So we did a fundraising campaign to lower the for scholarships buses and to lower the cost to all the kids. Okay. Yeah. So nobody's paying over two hundred twelve dollars out of eight hundred. Oh, kids. great. Yeah. And okay. was it uh, fundraising uh, effort was intense? Was Mark. Yeah, Mark. Berlin Berlin Insurance made a huge donation for transportation. That's so awesome. that's awesome. Thank you. Thank the buses. But so you still need money to get to keep that two twelve per kid. Yeah, so what happens was when I calculated um, these, there were so many spreadsheets, but there must have been a formula that was wrong. So the initial $154 deduction from the kids should have been 134 so Essentially, anyone that had a balance will owe another $20. I think also, Julie, we had some less and kids that decided to go that weren't going. I think there True. was just so many There were so many moving things. parts here, yeah. and this is all like, once once it's back running regularly, this won't be we won't have the same challenges that we did this year. So you need another um, one. Yeah, but but it, it's it's a little it's just a little more because because it leave Tuesday, so because time is of the essence. Getting that fourteen hundred dollars is not an issue because we'll just send it back out to parents and say everyone has to pay twenty more dollars. Twenty dollars, right? No problem. Done. Um, the issue is that we they leave Tuesday, so we have to cut the check, and if Said parents send in checks for twenty dollars and won't process in time. So what we have other avenues we're exploring. But if we got the money, we could figure so it out. What is what is the avenue now? Is that a GoFundMe or is that what this year the dollar amount that we see? I'm no, sorry. no. No, if anybody how, wants how to give more, more money. Now? Oh, so well. Where do they send their donations, Julie? Tell the people. If yes. anyone wants to donate now, we're gonna just have people write checks and write up to make your sponsor. So no, not parents. We want twenty dollar checks for more just Lynn or Morgan. No, they said I was oh, that what, that too. I was told not that because the it takes us a while to process, right? If we were leaving a week from today, <clears throat> parents could send in twenty dollars and it's gravy, no problem. 
because we did it in process, but because we leave Tuesday and we have to pay this massive amount. At this point, if anyone wants to donate, write it up to Nature's Classroom and it'll get submitted with the final papers and as it has to be. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Or cash. <clears throat> I don't know that they accept. Yeah. No, but we could take At cash. At this moment, we'll take cash. We'll take cash. <laughs> <laughs> just going to say, we can take cash. With a receipt. Yeah. Because, yes, a check. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, we, 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 yeah, we, 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 I think we're good. If anybody wants to donate yeah, to Nature's Classroom, yeah, contact you with <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, contact me. Right. It's okay. We'll be we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. in our office. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so the motion has been made and seconded. So can we have a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? All right, the motion passes. And uh, may I have a motion to accept the fiscal year 22 audit? So moved. Megan? Second. Julie? Sorry. Any discussion on that? Questions? All right, then. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? All right, 5 0. That motion passes. I have my eye as well. Uh, that is the last business item. So we've got a little bit of time. Does anybody have any future agenda item proposals? Uh, I've already talked about the policies that we'll be updating. Um, anybody have anything? Um, I know last meeting we talked about the Fuller Foundation donation. I didn't know if that could be assigned to one of the subcommittees, students accept technology. And... Yeah. Yeah, because we have to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I saw in the choir with Joyce and Ross Fuller calling up, so I do know. Okay. Yeah, so we'll get the success committee working on that. Maybe. Uh, Talk, we'll have a meeting next week, maybe. All right. Um, anybody else have anything? I have something this is more like creative though. Okay. I don't know if it's out of our purview. If we don't have too much on our June ad agenda, maybe when we forward, we invite a student from each grade to come in and just talk about maybe highlight from the year. Hmm. Yeah, I had asked Caroline something like that for class one. Yeah, they're a little shy or, or yeah. don't want to come to a meeting, but yeah. It's, but you like the little guys, too. Yeah. I would love that. No, no, we do. Yeah, like 7 o'clock or Oh, this month, actually. Yeah, let's, yeah. that's fine. Even in the elementary that's school? Well, just come in and tell us what you're yeah. doing yeah. or what you're looking forward yeah. to doing or yeah. anything. Students. So what are we going to do, have the principals try to rally that up? Yeah. We're working on it already. So yeah. you're all set. Right. What would have John? John, 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 John. He's going. Actually, if you think about it, well, he's one. He's um, chaperoning Nature's classroom. There you go. He's the administrator guy. <laughs> so um, nice. That's a really good idea. Yeah. And just say what they loved about school, or like for the little right. kids, you could just say what What do you wish? I will say wish. Well, like what's your favorite? But then like. I think that's a yeah, great idea exactly. because even the little kids, like they have so much valuable knowledge. Like, yes. oh, what, you know, what do you, yeah. What's your favorite? What do you like and what do you yeah. not like so much? What do you think yeah, might need the, to change? Uh, Carrots. Like the kids who wrote that Karis. history book can come in yeah. and be good yeah. too, you know? My son would be like, I don't like reading. And then they know about the school committee and well yeah it's actually a good idea to do as an annual thing because that and you get a different kid coming in every year so yeah it kind of teaches them about yeah governance and community involvement speaking of involvement um, we do need to get uh, conversations going with ptos uh, on just you know future plans mm -hmm. just uh, see if i know they're interested in working together mm -hmm. more right this Past few months was pretty good. I think uh, pretty good work by them, and good relationship building. So yep. maybe we'll talk to them for something for next month, or maybe through some committees or something. Great idea too. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Thanks to them as well. They're big. Um, and then yeah, yeah, Lisa. 
And I spoke with um, a mom from BNS, mm -hmm. and she was really like trying to push for getting more of the performing arts, like mm -hmm. the stringed instruments, yeah. you know, for the younger kids and theater and things like that. And I don't know if this is something that you know we would discuss or have anything to do with, but she's like, I'll do anything to help. You know, she, I think she already sent like you know letters or emails to um, staff, and she said she would like manage a booster club, you know, to raise okay. funds for it and everything. And she's like all in and will have awesome. to do anything she can to make it happen. And yeah, those are the types of things that I'm, I'm talking about with the parent groups and things like yeah. with the plan that we have, the three-year plan that we have, right? I think, you know, more performing arts is part of the plan. It didn't yeah. go to the budget situation mm -hmm. this year, but yeah, for next year, that's, you know, we need to, what do the parents want? What are they going to support? Yeah. What are the voters going to support for the mm -hmm. schools? There used to also be like an after school program mm -hmm. in COVID too, and that yeah. that was like you could do like an art class or like there's an American Girl class or Legos. So mm -hmm. you know there could be like maybe a drama. So mm -hmm. maybe they have that now, just get in Berlin. It used to oh, be in Boston, yeah. right? And now Berlin uh, PTO. Yeah, the Lake is has a really extensive program mm -hmm. going on if all of those. Pieces yeah, they call it yeah, the original yeah. program. Yeah, that's really yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's so like every month they do a different activity. Um, is it like every week or just one day? It's, or? it's every month, right? Yeah, they have all sorts of things sprinkled throughout. Yeah. 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 So Boylston needs uh does that that link run that in Berlin? Yeah. Maybe yeah. the other three runs yeah. it. Them. But see, that's the thing. I think it takes a person yep. committed to doing right. that, and she's taking that. And on. she's a volunteer. Yeah, right. this yeah. is the first time. It's it's terrific. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, the program in Boylston used to be like run for four weeks or something yeah. like that. It was like every Monday or whatever. Same an hour. We do those, but she does day ones too. She yeah. does one that runs like they do a theater one once a week, and well, they'll do like a dream catcher, make dream catchers one day on a different day of that month, make a wind chime. Yeah, they have someone come in. And was the person from Hudson or something? The art studio? Oh, for the um, wind chime one? A couple of different ones, but I think that was one, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, so cool. she runs an art studio and she came in and did something with the kids. Yeah. So, stuff like that. Yeah. And then pay. Yes. And yeah. So you pay, pay for it, whatever. You pay. 20 bucks. And then you get the Yeah, that's how well, Boylston used to have, last year, Boylston had a Lego club, but the principal organized that in Boylston. Um, with, with the Lego the League. But even like, Nine, 2019 and 20, there was. There was more stuff. There Who was organized stuff. all that stuff? I think it was Fane Sullivan, honestly. I know she did. Uh, like, she did American Girl, and there was, there was art. I mean, and even that happens back to when I was in elementary school, too. Like, there was like bead class. And yeah. We ran for like four weeks, one yeah. day a week. That's a huge, I think that's really important for kids that don't play sports, especially. I think kids need something after, or like parents are like, I don't want to do after school program. Because I don't, you know, whatever for whatever reason, um, the enrichment is huge. So I, I agree. If we can get that, figure out a way to, yeah, we have got to work with the PTOs and whether yeah. or not it's a, an employee that's already working at the school that takes it on as a project, or if the PTO has a volunteer that they could assign. That's that. the key. Is the volunteers. Well, yeah, yeah that would be huge because then. I mean, but people do. They did pay historically, so I'm. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Small the vendors get paid. Yeah. The vendor gets paid, but you'd have to pay. The, Parents probably have to pay the PTO if that works in Berlin. Yeah, and then the, the PTO, PTO manages them. Yeah. So yeah, that's more a lot. That's another thing for the PTO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do a great job. Class. Yeah, yeah, Link really does. They do a great job, Amy and Kyle. Yeah, really do. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of work for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we could do that. But that's where PTOs link together. So maybe Jackie and Kyle already. Yeah, now that's together. Yeah, that's that's the thing, right? That's. One dish, right? And they can recruit yeah. some more people, right? And then they can re recruit some more. Yeah. With this huge incoming kindergarten class in Boylston, hopefully they can recruit some more parents. And you could also do, you could use the same vendors. You know, yeah, it's so easy for planning. planning. For planning. Yeah, so it's do the same easy. program. Yep. You just need a parent that's going to organize. So you get a new, that's the other huge I'll thing. See if they want to come parents to step up. And, uh, oh, good idea. Let us know. Yes. Yeah, if you put a call out, be like, "Hey, this is what we're thinking." I think you get a lot of return emails on that. I, I think so. I think that like, big like thing. This mom, like, yes, like she. Computer, this mom would like, you know, probably. Like, yeah, yes, yeah. she could yeah. run. If she run, maybe she would want to be interested in working with should, Kyle and doing an enrichment. Yeah, so you should honestly awesome. just run the same program they're running, not those exact programs. I mean, how they have their website, how they have yeah. their set up. It's 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 beautifully done. They just easy. need someone in Boylston that yes. will work with. So yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah right, Jeff. Do uh, like agility programs. Yeah, 
program. Yes. Maybe somebody would be willing to come to Boyle and do that. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I would just meditation. Right. Meditation would be great. That would be I'll see if they're interested in coming to speak to us, Jackie. Yeah, in June. Um, that would be great to get something like that short, 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 up and running for September. I don't know. The ATOs meet in the summer. All right. Um, I don't know. There was, yeah, maybe. Maybe the beach. That's a lot of work. All right. It, yeah. There was one, someone asked me on the way out of the, the town meeting, like, oh, why wouldn't you get more kindergarten teachers instead of an age for each three? And I was like, my brain was fried at that time. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, but later, after sleep, like, you know, we don't have the room at BES. So right. I just wanted, mm -hmm. I wasn't able to verbalize that thought or, yeah, <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> you made good comments. I've watched the video. You made good comments. All right, anybody else? Um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we are adjourned.